what are five must-haves if you are getting a parrot? There's my hands macaw. So that you have an idea of what you need to get, what you'll need to get or set up, and sort of what to look for within each one. Hey guys, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parrot Bliss Bond. This might also be a must-have because it'll tell you all about how to set things up to provide a quality life for your parrot so you can have quantities of bliss. Here's some more of my other books. Um, my mission is to help you in this case, really set up, and I'm just gonna show you my books, set up the best setup you can for your parrot so that you um, know what to expect, you know what it's gonna be like, these are coloring books, and you know um, kind of like what you're gonna be shopping for, what you're going to need to look for because for example, the first item, thanks for letting me show you my books. The first item, of course, is a cage. However, how do you choose a cage? What's significant and what do you need to look at when it comes to a cage? If you research online, you're gonna find information on what the appropriate size, cage size is for a parrot. Different sizes are gonna be appropriate depending on the parrot. We really wanna look at their wingspan because believe it or not, when a parrot opens their wings, they tend to be larger in my experience than they are from head to tail, like the full length of their body. So their wingspan's pretty good and you want them to be able to open their wings in their cage and flutter their wings. So you're actually looking for having two times the width, three times the length, and um, two times the height. And this is important because it gives them, again, that room to move around. When you're looking for a cage, it's actually more important to have a wider cage, as long as it's high enough, then it is, your parrot isn't gonna go up and down like an elevator as much as they're gonna go side to side because you know they're used to flying and they fly more like that. When it comes to looking for a cage, you're also gonna to wanna to look at the bar spacing. The bar spacing is all about really their head. On the one hand, we want as big a bar spacing as possible so that they can see more. On the other hand, we don't want bar spacing where their head could get through and get stuck. So we want the bar spacing to actually be smaller than their skull so that they don't get their head in and their neck stuck, that kind of thing. So the appropriate size cage depends on the species of parrot that you're getting. When it comes to the cage, you're going to need to look at the appropriate size, the proper place to put it, Purchase and toys for the cage and make sure that you're happy with the bowls. So when it comes to that proper place to put your cage, your cage can't necessarily live outside depending on a couple of things like how much sun hits the cage and whether or not there's some really good um, shade so that the parrot can go to something cooler, like a shaded spot, get away from the sun, that kind of thing, be protected from wind, from rain. So hopefully your cage is gonna live indoors. And if you're indoors, it's sort of the same. You don't necessarily want the cage to live by a window where if a lot of sun comes in and your parrot can't get out of the sun, then they might get too hot. Similarly, you don't want them to be right by like an air conditioner or even a heating vent where they're gonna have constant temperature or wind that they can't escape from. In the wild, they would be able to move around and go somewhere different if the temperature is too hot or too cold or too windy for them or even too wet. So you wanna make sure that your parrot's cage's location is somewhere that on the one hand, they like to be around you, you're in the flock, hopefully they aren't in their cage too much, but when they are in their cage, they wanna be around you, but not, not in direct temperature and not too close to like a barking dog or an animal like that that's going to bother them because that can really stress them out. When it comes to perches, we can talk about two kinds of perches in the sense that there's perches that go in your cage and the second item that is a must have for your parrot is perches outside of the cage. Perches outside of the cage are perches that your parrot can perch on. A lot of people will get a play area. I've made PVC play areas from my perches it can be some semblance of a fake tree that allows them to move around and go to some different places and perch so that they have a nice place to hang out and not necessarily have to always be in their cage so they can be with you. 
So back to the cages though, and I'm sorry, I'm just, now I'm skipping around a little. Um, the, you want to make sure that they have perches in their cage. The worst kind of perch you can get for a parrot's cage is just a, a plastic one that doesn't change. And that tends to be the ones that come with the cage or even a wooden dowel that's just the same diameter. It's just a smooth cylinder. That doesn't allow the parrot's foot to flex at different <laughs> diameters. There's Jules, my Indian ring neck. Hi, Jules. He's like, hey, do you have any treats? And I'm like, actually, I'm doing a video, Jules. So within their perch, the best, with, sorry, within their cage, the best perches are natural wood. You have to make sure that it's not toxic. If you get the perch at a exotic bird store, hopefully they have non-toxic woods for your parrot in the form of their perches. And you want different sizes and a couple of different ones, if not really three, four. You kind of want to make the cage not too crazy full, but you want them to be able to move around. And within moving around, somewhat a little elevator and a little horizontal, you want them to be able to go to different perches in the cage. For example, at night, they tend to like to sleep up higher in the cage. And so I like to provide a place that has two walls, like a roof and something on the side so that I don't necessarily have to cover the cage, but they can go somewhere during the day or at night where they can perch and find a place to rest really well. Hi, sweetie, what you doing? Hi. Oh, I know, I know. Emerald went to the vet this week and <clears throat> she just hasn't fully recovered. And so she's not feeling too, too great. All right, food dishes. Hello, Jules. Okay, let's get you a treat. All right, Jules. There you go. You want one too? Oh, good. I'm happy to see you eating. Yeah, there you go. So food dishes, you want to check to see what kind of food you're gonna need for your parrot. And we'll talk about food a little bit as well. But I'm really picky about my food dishes. I want for my food dishes to be places where, no, don't steal hers. No, don't do that. That's not nice. And there's Blue, my Quaker. Um, you want your food dishes to be places where when the bird perches, their food dish isn't right underneath. Sometimes he's saying, feed me, feed me. I'm like, I already did, I already did. I don't even know if you ate your pistachio. Did you eat it? No. Hey, he's got me at a disadvantage because I'm holding emeralds. Here, I think this is part of your pistachio. No? There you go. Be nice. So when the bird perches, I was hoping to show you, but Emerald's eating her pistachio. When the bird perches like blue, you don't want the food dish to be right under him because then the, you know, their soil, soiling of it will fall either into the water or into their food, which of course is not what you want. So I like to make sure that the cage is really large enough so that when they're perched, I have plenty of room and the food dish isn't too close by. Someone's being mean and feisty this morning, so we're gonna grab a pen. When it comes to parrots, you want to have a carrier just in case you need to take them to the vet, or if you're like me, you might wanna take them like out to a restaurant because when restaurants have outdoor seating, you could take your parrot in their carrier. Um, anything like that, but it's always really good just in case you need to take them. There are different kinds of carriers and the kind of carrier, of course, should depend on your parrot size and what you're really using your carrier for. I sometimes get different carriers because I have different birds like my Linnies or my Green Chiconia that I'm gonna take with me. And so I need different sizes and then I need to adjust and put perches in, that kind of thing. So carriers can be kind of fun and they're very useful, especially in case of an emergency, but certainly for when you take them to their annual vet exam. The fourth thing that you want for your parrot, of course, in preparing for getting a parrot is the appropriate food. When it comes to parrots, of course, how much you feed them is going to depend on their size. And that varies quite a bit since parrotlets are about 30 grams and about three inches. 
and macaws can be a thousand grams and a couple feet. So really, of course, the amount of food is gonna vary. The basics that are consistent in a parrot's diet are number one, vegetables. Parrots need good vegetables in their diets, especially beta carotene rich vegetables. Someone's just not being nice this morning. What's going on, Jules? Um, they need vegetables every day and that's gonna help them because it has some micronutrients. It's, it's just food. Now you can also, and I also give my parrots pellets, a pelleted based diet has all of the vitamins and minerals that a parrot needs. My parrots stay really, really healthy. Like I don't usually have problems outside of a crazy thing every now and then kind of thing. But generally speaking, they do really well. And one reason I think is because of the vegetables, but also because of the pellets, because again, that gives them all the vitamins and um, minerals that they need to keep them healthy. Next, um, depending on the species of parrot, within our fourth category, the fourth thing you need to prepare for your parrot is the appropriate food. Hi, sweetie. Yes, I know you're back. I know, I know. So <clears throat> if you have a bird like emerald, they require some extra fat in their diet from either seeds or a few nuts. Not too many. If you have a bird like blue here, my Quaker, he actually needs more of a fat-free diet. And then if you have something like a parrotlet, you need to give them some additional uh, parakeet seeds, low-fat seeds. So you have to research the kind of species you have to find out if they need additional nuts, no additional fat, or some additional low-fat seeds. Okay, number five, last but not least, for your parrot in preparing for them, one thing that you're gonna wanna know is that parrots have beaks, as you can see, that I think mother nature made for helping her recycle wood. They love chewing on wood, they love chewing on cardboard, they love chewing on their toys, they love chewing on even paper. And so let's see if you wanna bite that, see what I mean? So many of my papers have decorations just like that. So it's important to make sure that your parrot does have some toys, which we call toys, but they're really things for them to chew because they're intended to be chewers. This means that your parrot is going to need a pretty constant and consistent supply of either non-toxic wood that they can bite, clean cardboard boxes, toys that you get from a parrot store, or that kind of, some kind of wood, so that they can compete with me because they're happy and healthy and they can be loud. This is what it's like to have 22 plus species. I love my parrots, my parrots are my bliss, and I love keeping them happy and healthy. And a lot of times that means I bring natural enrichment home. But there you have the five things you're gonna need if you're bringing a parrot home for the first time. A cage, and a purse for outside of their cage in addition to the ones inside their cage, a carrier for things like going to vet, food and toys for your parrot. I hope that helps you have a really good idea as to what you're gonna be looking for. Price-wise, again, it's gonna depend on the size of your parrot because smaller parrots are gonna require a smaller cage and it's just gonna cost less money. Their toys are smaller, it costs less money. Their food, they're not gonna eat as much, it costs less money. So I can't give you an idea of that, but I can give you an idea of the five basic things you're gonna need that do apply no matter what size your parrot is. I hope that helps and I hope you have a blissful bond with your parrot.